Okay, everybody. <laughs> we are going to talk about Drupal for data. Uh, but mostly, we're going to build something. And hopefully everyone will help us out a little bit with the building. Less talking than more doing. I am Jody. This is John. Hello. Correct. Line up. Stand there. Oh. Uh, we work at ZipTech, which is in Philadelphia, and we are celebrating our 10th year. And we are a primarily a Drupal shop. Primarily. Primarily, we do like public facing websites, like marketing sites, but sometimes we get to do interesting data apps as well. So I think a really um, easy way to get people to understand data is through spreadsheets because just about everybody that has an office job understands spreadsheets. And a lot of people do not really quite grasp what a database is. And even if you are an engineer, you want to be able to explain the concepts to the other people at your organization. So it's nice to be able to start with spreadsheets. So every organization runs on, as far as I can tell from my clients, they, they run on dozens or hundreds of spreadsheets that they're constantly updating. So I just took a look. I usually use Google Drive for my spreadsheets. And I just took a look at what's in my spreadsheets. And it's pretty typical stuff. Invoicing, budgets, accounts receivable aging, um, project allocations, pages that, that need to get migrated or updated, a uh, estimate, an editorial calendar, a hiring plan. This one I like. Ziftec birth dates and cake preferences. Um, Probo usage, an architecture plan, karma, I guess we give out karma, uh, work order estimates. I guess that's pretty typical. A lot of, so a lot of them are financial in nature. Others are relating to employees and things like that. So I think every organization has lots of these types of spreadsheets. And there's many advantages of using spreadsheets which I think most people understand. They're really easy to update. They're really fast to create. Everyone understands how to use them for on at least a basic level. And they're fairly like universal. You do get into some problems with between versions of Excel or something, but you can always export things to CSV. And, you, and people can do calculations pretty easily in them, right? So there's lots of reasons to use them. But there are definitely times when people overuse spreadsheets. So some examples are if, this, if the data in your spreadsheet is really critical to your organization so that if anything goes wrong with that data, you're in a lot of trouble. That's maybe not the best time to use a spreadsheet. Calculation mistakes, we see this all the time. We have a budget template spreadsheet and people are always adding new rows to the budget and then the calculations get messed up and nobody realizes that it's not calculating all of the rows properly and we get the wrong totals on our estimates. That's just really easy to do in spreadsheets. Like in order to make sure that your formulas are right, you have to go check each cell and make sure that everything's calculating right all the time. You won't really notice if something's wrong. Inconsistent data formatting. So people are just entering text into these fields most of the time and they might enter a date one way or a different format another time and it makes it hard to use that data in the future. Um, software incompatibility can be a problem. I got, I have a lot of clients that send like Excel files and I have, this is a real picture of my Excel because I have like the Mac 2011 version. And so sometimes I can't use some feature that they had in their spreadsheet. Um, and, and coming along with it's easy to update things, it's also really easy to make mistakes. You could like have your cat walk across your keyboard and you know delete some rows or chain edit some things and you don't even realize it. So there's a lot of advantages to, instead of using a spreadsheet, 
to use a web application with a database. So, for example, you can validate the data as people are entering it in, have required fields or other types of validation for the formatting of the data so that you always get consistent data that you can work with. You can have a better change history. Like when I use uh, Google Drive Sheets, I can, I can go back and view revisions, but I can't just like pick a cell and see who changed it when, right? <laughs> Which is really important. Or what if data was deleted? How can I find out who deleted it when and find out if it, if it was supposed to be deleted? Um, you can, if you're using a web app, you can integrate with pretty much anything out on the web, right? So you can make your web app do anything from sending emails to integrating with other software that you're using. And you have the full power of a programming language instead of just the limited ability of the, you know, Excel formulas. You can handle much larger data sets more easily. So if you have a spreadsheet and you have like thousands of uh, rows, it starts to become unmanageable. I think it gets to the point where you can't even open the file. You can have access control in a web app. So you can say, okay, these people are allowed to view the data. These people can edit it and no one's allowed to delete it, right? So you can prevent problems and, and manage your data a lot better. And you can do things like integrating with file management. So you have more types of data. Let, they can upload a file that goes along with the data or whatever else they need to do. So I think you could probably think of lots of you know, additional things. Web applications are a whole lot more powerful than a spreadsheet. On the other side, web applications are obviously harder to create than just hitting new file in Excel. They require maintenance for security and some type of a hosting. Uh, they may require training for the people who are going to use them because most people don't really need a lot of training to use an Excel spreadsheet, but you, you have to train them just that they have to log into the site and you know where to go. And people will probably need to have user logins to use your web app, which is one more thing that they have to deal with instead of just going to like their um, company uh, Google Drive or something and finding the file there. So that being said, you have to think carefully about when it actually is a good idea to move from a spreadsheet to a web app. And so some of the reasons why it might be time to switch are that your data is just so critical to the organization that having any problems in that spreadsheet is just not really tolerable anymore. The data set's gotten too large. Um, people are spending a lot of time working in the spreadsheet, doing things that a computer could automate. You need access control to who can do what, or you I see this one all the time. People are working in a spreadsheet and they start to put in comments and the comments you know, are impossible to read. They're like in a little rectangle and if you click it, you can see they have like a whole big comment and then somebody else wants to answer their comment. So they make another column for like responses to that comment. Now somebody wants to write back to that one. Now they've got another column, you know, they start to have like a whole discussion in the spreadsheet. That's when it's not really working anymore. Okay. so. If you have decided, oh, but that being said, there's lots of times that you should not build a web app for your spreadsheet because it's overkill for most spreadsheets, right? So you really want to pick um, important data and it makes more sense usually for larger organizations. So I think Drupal is actually a really good fit for data management. Unfortunately, people think of Drupal usually as a content management system or content management framework, but actually um, Drupal is, is so agnostic about what it means to have content that it works really well for any type of data. And so I really would like people to think of Drupal as more of a general data management system um, because we, all of our clients have these types of problems with their data, but they come to us to just like make their marketing site when actually making these little apps to handle data in a better way is really fast and easy in Drupal. 
And most of the time when they want us to add a, this type of feature, it really only takes a couple of hours because there's no design work. Um, it's really just straightforward stuff that they want to do. Um, and so some of the reasons that Drupal is really excellent is that it makes it really fast to build a data model. It has includes views so you can make simple reports very quickly and change them. So a lot of the things that you would want to do to make a data system, you can potentially do with, uh, with non-coders who are just kind of understand Drupal framework basics. It has a really good roles and permissioning system, and it's easy to extend to do whatever you want. So let's get to it. All right, so I made a, an example spreadsheet the link is in the um, name of the file, but it's also right here. So if you go there, you should have edit access. And feel free, or I would love if you, if you get bored while I'm talking, just add some more data for me. Can everyone read this? Is it visible? Cool. All right. Because I got too bored and I couldn't add any more data. Um, okay, so what you're looking at here it's just an example of a typical spreadsheet that an organization would have. This comes from a friend of mine who, um, who was working as an um, electrician at a refinery. And at his refinery, they have rules about how often each of the employees has to take different trainings, safety trainings. Right? So all of the electricians have to take certain safety trainings, maybe, maybe one training they have to take each year, maybe another one they have to take every couple of years, depending on what the training is and what the rules are. And so they have this enormous Excel sheet because if they have a couple hundred employees and they have like 20 different trainings they have to take, they log each time somebody takes a training here. So they've got thousands of rows here. And then they have um, a training manager who has to figure out from this how to s schedule the trainings to keep everybody in compliance. And you can kind of immediately see how difficult that would be from looking at this, right? Because you can try to like make all kinds of calculations in Excel to try to figure that out and filter this data different ways, but it's never gonna be great or easy and there's lots of ways it can go wrong. Um, so it's like, so, and if they, if they mess it up, then they're out of compliance, right? So if you look at this and you go, okay, wh which training do I need to schedule for, for next month to make sure we're all in compliance? And what if I have new employees that haven't even taken the trainings yet? It's kind of like impossible to deal with it. And they spend all this time like pouring over this spreadsheet. So, so I thought, you know, this is not actually that complicated if it wasn't in a spreadsheet like this. I mean, a computer can very easily solve this problem that you're, that you're spending all of this time doing. And it, you could even have it um, email you automatically to tell you what trainings you need to schedule when, right? It can figure all of this out. You don't need to be pouring over this all the time. So you can see here, there are employees. You see some of them over and over again because they're taking different trainings. They have uh, employee IDs, but sometimes people enter them in differently. So that's going to make things more difficult when you're searching for things or doing formulas. There are training names, but they're just sort of like written in here. So again, like they might be spelled differently. So if you're doing searches, who knows what's going to happen. The training dates, they seem okay, but people might be entering them in a different format. Oh yeah, see this one says 2018, the other ones are just two digits. So somebody's gonna have to fix all that to do anything with that. And there's another sheet here called Trainers. I don't know why that's so zoomed in, but that's where they keep the contact information for the different trainers. So if you wanna add some trainers for the trainings, go ahead. And so the first thing we need to do to start building our Drupal version of this 
is to normalize the data structure. So a normalized data structure will typically have more tables. Right now we only have two tables. We have this one and then we have trainers. Uh, so typically we'll end up with more tables when we normalize it and we'll remove all the duplication. So there's a lot of duplication in here right now. Pearson, Jack, Pearson, Jack. Here's the employee ID, here's the employee ID. So if, if for some reason um, Jack changed his name or his employee ID, we have to go and find all the right ones. And this one's entered in differently, so that'll mess us up. The trainings are duplicated, right? Fire safety, fire safety. So that's not normalized either. Um, so we're gonna have to normalize that all. And one way I, I like to look at trying to figure out what tables you use is to just do it by now. When you look at the name of this, of this sheet or table, it's called employee training log. That's three nouns, right? So that's a hint that it's not normalized and it actually consists of three different tables because each one is a separate noun. So if we normalize it, we're gonna to have to split it apart. So can anybody think of uh, what some of the tables might be in the new database? Employees. Employees, right. So I'll put employee and, oh, I don't know why this is all crazy looking. Okay, and then another one would be the training. This is looking like crazy. I need to maybe refresh it. Let's see. Okay. <coughs> Employee. I'm just leaving some space for the fields. And then there's this idea of a training log. Okay, so there's, there's such a thing as a training. A training might be the fire safety training. And then there's this idea of a training log, which would be we had a fire safety training on this date and these were the people that were there, right? So that's a separate thing. There's a difference between um, math 101 that happened in the fall of 2018 and just math 101 in general, right? So I'm going to put, I would call it sort of as an as a engineer, I would call it a training instance, but I don't think that's going to be really user friendly. So I'm just going to call it a training log where they're logging that a training occurred. And then that, so that takes care of this sheet and then trainers, that's okay. I'll keep that as trainers, but singular. Okay. Then we have to figure out which fields go with each uh, object here, or table here, right? So which ones go with employee out of here? First name, ID, employee. Right. So the last name, first name, employee, ID are actually parts of the employee. First name, last name, employee, ID. And then the training itself Right now, it really just has a uh, name. Then there is a training log, which is sort of not as simple as just picking columns here. The training log would be which training it was, training reference, when it was, date, and which employees were trained. Um, now there's also this next training do by column. I really don't like the way that data is because it has implicit information in there. It's like it's already calculated for us, right? So if I was going to add, if I'm going to add a new row for fire safety and I put in, I know what the date is today then I have to figure out what am I going to put here. I have to go back to the other ones for fire safety and figure out that it looks like it happens every year. All right, so it's kind of easy to mess that up. And it's kind of weird that you're asked to do that work. What I think makes more sense is if we put the frequency of the training on the training table, 
right? So some kind of uh, number of days or number of months or number of years. <laughs> and then we can figure out that other stuff automatically. Because it'll be a lot easier to see if we put that in correctly than looking at all those other dates. Okay, and then for trainer, we've got these fields. The, this one should become a reference to the training. Um, and I don't like to put in names um, without splitting them into first and last names. So you can do more with them, like sorting and things. So I'll put in first name, last name, training reference, phone, maybe other contact info, um, and the company, which could be a, a reference if we, if we wanted to um, normalize that further so that we could have a company table um, in case some of the trainers maybe come from the same company. We could just have one place where we keep that contact information for that company, normalize it further. But I'll keep it like this for now. So that basically is all you need to, as a sort of basic Drupal architecture plan. Yeah. I'd do one more. For training, I would do a category. So if you had electrical companies, sharp object companies, and pipe bending companies, if you mark your training sessions, with a, with a category, and then you mark your companies with a category, they give you an implicit join so you can find all the ones that you might pick. Yeah, and, and actually in his real data, he has different categories of employees, and depending on what category the employee is, whether they're a mechanic or an electrician or a plumber, they have different trainings that they have to take. So the categories go along with the employees and the trainings. Um, so we can put that as an optional because we don't have time to add all of these probably, but, but maybe you can get involved and you can add some fields too. So, all right, so here we go. So what I did was I went to Pantheon and I started a new Drupal 8 site. I was going to do that all live, but it kind of wasted like five minutes. So I started one and the, I added about two modules, which I'll tell you about when we get to them. And I changed the uh, color scheme a little bit. That's about it. So you can go to this site at the other short link and you can choose, since there's not that many of you, hope you are not malicious and insane. You can log in as either an editor or as an admin. So log in as an editor if you don't feel confident with your ability to uh, not be insane. And log in as an admin if you want to really get in there and have some fun. And the password is Princeton. So let me see if anybody's actually able to log in there. Okay, good. All right, so the first thing we need to do is start making content types. Now, it really depends on how fast you're trying to do this, how important this stuff is. Um, in sort of like a real world case, I usually make custom entity types, but this is gonna be fine to just use content types on this one for a quick demo. So I'm just gonna make content types for each of these tables. So the first one is employee, and I just go through here, set some of these options. And then I need to add the fields. Oh, it automatically adds a body field because Drupal is a little bit confused. It thinks it's a content management framework, not a data management framework. But by simply deleting that, you are a data management framework. Okay, so now I can add the first name, the last name, the employee ID, required. <laughs> if 
for the employee ID, I'll put integer. Uh, obviously, it would depend on uh, what kind of oops, IDs you have. Require that one. And that was all they needed. I'm going to manage form display and just clean it up a little bit. We don't need all these sort of generic content uh, things. Okay. Good. And I'm going to leave published there because if an employee left, you would want to unpublish them rather than deleting them in case you want to keep the old logs. Okay, so now our form looks like this. Oh, what happened to our um, title field? It tricked me. Ah, it, it got ahead of me. Okay, the what I did was I used an, an extra module called automatic entity label because I didn't want a title field. You have to have a title uh, for nodes in Drupal because when they show up in the administrative interface, they need some kind of title. So I made an automatic title which is going to use these tokens. So it's going to be last name, comma, first name. And it'll hide the title uh, field. So you don't have to worry about the title. So go ahead, if you're, if you're in the site, and add some employees. So we're going to need some uh, content here. And I'm going to next create the content type for a training. Training. I always turn off preview before submitting because I don't want anybody reporting any display bugs about what happens when you preview. Okay, so the only field we've added to training is uh, the frequency. So I'm going to put that as an integer. Put that in in years, let's say. Okay, I'm gonna clean up the form a little bit. <coughs> All right, so now you should be able to add some training. So you can either add ones that we had on the spreadsheet or just whatever you want. And I need to add a content type for training log. Here I'm going to add, let me get rid of the body first. I'm going to add a date. And I only need the date, not the time. I don't really need the time. Okay, I'm going to default the date to today, like, because you might be logging it right when it happens. And I'm going to add a reference now to the training. Require that. And then I'll add a reference so you can pick the employees. You can have unlimited employees. 
and I won't require it because you may add the training. You may add the log before they have completed the training. Okay. Um, date employees trained, training, trainer maybe, but I need to add the trainer content type first. Okay, I'm just cleaning up these fields. It's a lot easier if you do this kind of stuff right away. Otherwise you have to get a uh, committee to debate each change. Okay. All right, now I need to add, oh, I do wanna do an automatic label here. So they shouldn't have to name their training log, right? So I'll say that for this label, it's going to be the name of the training and then the date. Uh, let's see if I can get the date out of here in a nice format. Custom format, this is what I want. HTML date. Okay. And let me add the last content type, which is trainer. gonna add the rest of the other fields for the trainer for the sake of time. I'm just gonna go back to the training log and I'm going to add a reference to a trainer. So now you should be able to add some training logs and some trainers. And we'll have some nice data. Okay, so next we're gonna just start making some reports so you can see this data. So I'm just gonna go to views, add new view. I'll start with employees. And this is going to be showing content of type employee. I'll create a page and it'll be a table of fields, 50 per page. I'll put it in the menu. At employees, looks good. All right, so I'm gonna put all of the fields that are part of employees here. So it's going to be first name, last name, employee ID, and I will, okay, 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 and I'm going to add a, a link to view the employee, link to content. Okay, then let me just rearrange these. I'm gonna get rid of the title since it's redundant. Last name, first name, employee ID, view. And then it's really useful when you're dealing with this kind of data display to make everything sortable. And then by default, I'll sort by the last name. Then I can, okay, looking good. Now, let me get rid of this so we don't have any confusing sorts here. And then what I really like to do that helps uh, people a lot is in the header, add a text area and put a link to add a new one. Node add employee, add employee.
great. Okay, that's good. So here's our employees page now. And I can add an employee. Oh, you know what I like to do? When you add an employee, make it come back to this page afterwards. Add employee question mark destination equals slash employees. All right. So now you should be able to add an employee from here. And you should be able to see all your employees and sort all your employees. This is already a little bit better than that spreadsheet. And now I'm going to make another one like this, but for training. So what I'll do is I'll just duplicate this one and then change everything over to trainings. Okay. I'm going to add um, the title of the training. that uh, frequency or whatever it is. All right, display prefix and suffix. And then it's easier if you wanna get rid of a bunch of fields to just go into rearrange. Okay, then my table settings, sortable. Change the link to add a new one. Okay, and I think, oh, change the filter. Okay, we don't have any. Oh, I need to update my preview here. Content, oops, content type equals training. There we go. All right, so I need to add a space for my suffix because it doesn't look very good like that. So that, if I go here, oh, I think I just need to, yeah, there, there we go. So here's, here are my training. So the only thing I really see wrong here is this, how it doesn't have a space there. So I can fix that. That is under training, manage fields, field frequency suffix space here space years all right <coughs> clear my usually if you clear your render cache that's much faster than clearing all of your caches okay so now we can sort <coughs> various ways that's good okay now i just need to make the uh training logs one so i'll do the same thing and um, let's see, I'll duplicate this one. Training logs. Title. Training logs. Okay. And now I need the to get the date and the training name. I might want to know the trainer. And uh, I think that's it. I need to use this HTML date. Okay, trainer. Good, training, good. And then I'll get rid of some of these other ones. Remove, remove, view, training. I'm not gonna put the um, employees in here because I think it'll be kind of hard to read. 
So there might just be a whole bunch of them. Let's see. Content type is a training log. Okay. Settings here. Sortable, sortable, sortable. And by default, I'm gonna sort by date descending so you see the most recent ones at the top. All right, path training dash logs. Training logs, wait two. Okay. Permission to publish content, header here, node add, training log, training Incorrect. Training dash logs, add training log. Okay. Um, let's see. Did I change everything here? I think so. Training date, trainer view. Okay. And training log. All right. All right. Here's our training. Here's our training logs. Okay. So now we have reports for all of them, which are easier to sort and easier to add to, or at least at least easier to add to correctly than the old stuff. And we can set uh, permissions of who can edit and delete stuff. But um, we don't have tons of time. So I think what we should do is just sort of brainstorm other features that we would consider adding to this system. So continuing to build them all out. So I'm going back to my spreadsheet because I don't need a, a web app to brainstorm features. Additional features. Okay. So make this any bigger without screwing it up. All right. So I think if I was going to keep working on this, then some of the next things I would do is work on the displays of the individual um, entities, right? So for example, when I go to view a training, I should see all of the training logs that are part of that training. View training logs on training nodes. Right. Um, and similarly on employee nodes, view relevant training logs on employee nodes. And same thing on trainers. And training logs on trainers. Um, I would also add some filters, add some exposed filters to those views to make it easier to search them. So one filter I like is a, just add like the core search filter. You can also use search API and use whole search API views, but you can just add the core Add course search exposed filters, so that way you can search these um, listings, even if they have multiple pages. Um, I would add an exposed filter to the main training log. Training logs page um, to filter by training. And then I feel like I would want to get into some sort of better querying where maybe I could just be able to see what the most recent training was of each type for each employee um, so that you could get a, you could start to move towards being able to find out who needs trainings coming up and, and be able to figure that out more. I don't think you're going to be able to do all of that with views, and, I, and even if you can, you kind of like waste a lot of time trying to do super insane things with views with aggregation and uh, lots of different you know, filters going on, and sometimes you can't do it no matter what. Um, so I'd maybe do some custom queries 
to help show upcoming needs. Does anybody have any feature ideas as we were going through that? They would like to see. Yeah, alerts when a plan of training is approaching or when a need is approaching. Yeah, so he said to add, to add alerts, you mean like on the screen? Email. Well, emails. Automated emails. Okay. Yeah, I think that would be great. Automated emails when a training is going to be needed soon. Uh, we were thinking a nice easy one would be to turn on commenting on some of these things so that you could put comments about um, what you thought about the trainer or how the training went uh, so that you could think about that when you picked the next trainer. Although in reality um, they wouldn't care about that because none of the trainers actually train them on anything. They just like come in and like sign. It's just all about it's just, it's just all about the paperwork. Uh, but yeah, you could have comments um, about trainers or training, trainings. Um, you could also rate the trainers. A new employees currently out of compliance. Mm -hmm. An out of compliance view or listing. Uh, employee portal, like about what training do I need? Oh yeah, okay. Employee portal about trainings, or or um, any kind of other, uh, you know, yeah, documentation that people might come to on this site. Um, export to CSV feature. Sure. Export to CSV. That's another easy one. Maybe a single sign-on with um, whatever you're using at the organization so people can not need new usernames and passwords. Um, uh, what else could they use? Filter. Um, well, we didn't do any work with the um, user roles and permissions. So you definitely want to work on that. Make sure it's locked down. That's one thing I really like about Drupal is like you can you can just go to the permissions page and change who's allowed to access content, and all of a sudden you have an intranet, right? So I can just say view published content, not anonymous users. That takes care of that. Um, probably needs like a a home page would be nice. And maybe a logo. Um, yeah, I think that, and then we had, you know, ideas about adding categories for trainings and trainers and employees. So, I mean, I think if we added a lot of these features, it would save a lot of time because you could get it down to the point where the only thing you actually did on this site was add employees, which you could potentially get rid of as well if you if you could integrate with some other system that keeps track of your employees. Um, and then all you do is put in a training log every time a training happens. And you could have the system just email you what you need to know about scheduling the trainings and that's all you do, right? Because this was like literally like someone's full-time job just trying to figure this out. So ultimately, you know, I spent about half an hour, 45 minutes on it. We could add most of these other features in like, you know, another day working on it. So I, I just find these projects like actually a lot faster than, you know, making content sites. So I think that people don't really realize that um, it's not as hard to get a web app made 
to handle their data as they might think. Like they might, because I have I have um, clients all the time who will say things like, um, "Hey, uh, I'll show you like a, a page that that I made recently." <coughs> And there's this little calculator here. So I can say, oh, okay, if there's five teen births in Alabama, that's going to cost $36,000. And so when the client asked for this feature, they would say things like, is it possible to get to have Drupal calculate, you know, what the total number would be if there was like different numbers of births? And it's like, well, yeah, you mean you want to ask a computer to multiply two numbers together? You know, I think people don't realize that that these frameworks are actually code that you can do anything with. It's not just a content management system where you can only do content. So, you know, and then they said, well, okay, we would really like if it could round numbers, you know, down to the nearest thousand. Is that possible? Somebody else said, it's like, yeah, you know, <laughs> computers can definitely round numbers, you know, and do any type of math that you might want to do. And they're actually very good at that, you know. So, um, that is all I want to say about that. So, any further questions from the audience? Don't jump up all at once, or music requests, or... Just epiphanies, yes. At what point, with all the data, you know, basically for query tables and things like this, does Drupal 8 crap out? Crap out? Well, you know what I mean. I mean, in a sense, I'm not trying to be, in a, in a way of saying, like, okay, this is just too much data to try to manage. I mean, um, I, okay, so the question, I'm supposed to repeat the question. Okay, the question well, sorry, you don't have to use crap. The, uh, well, not use crap. The question was, you know, what, when is the, when do you, are you having too much data? For Drupal to use, I mean, I don't, I don't know that there's really a limit to the amount of data that I've never heard of anybody. I mean, you would have to, you know, get a bigger server if your database was too big. Um, but there is no real problem. I mean, you would, you wouldn't want to use core search if you had tons and tons of data. You would want to use search API with solar or some other system like that that was made for a lot of data. Um, but any of just like the MySQL queries and stuff, they scale pretty well. Yeah. You wouldn't want to do a display with 10,000 rows because the browsers would crap out. Well, yeah, I always put a pager. Yeah. I always put a pager, put either 50 or 100 rows. Um, like all the, all the ones that, that I was making have pagers. I don't know if we actually added enough data to to see the pagers, but I mean, I don't know. I mean, there's there's probably a, a limit where it would just be ludicrous to to just use PHP in MySQL, but I think it would be, you know, more than millions of you know points of data for you. I mean, depending on how big the data is. Yeah. Is there a way to just? Uh in a spreadsheet right from Google Drive and do all this? Yeah, so probably what you would want to do is export it as a CSV. And then you can pretty, what I usually do, um, I see people do like try to use feeds module, I don't even know if that exists for Drupal 8, um, or try to write migrations using migrate module to bring in CSVs. What I usually do is like, I'll just write little scripts. Uh, I'll show you an example. I think um, for that cost calculator, I had to import some data. So I just did, I always just look up what the PHP um, function, so it's fget CSV. So you can tell it the name of where the file is. You do fget CSV and you loop through each line as an array. And then I just take that, what I get, so that data I got, this is like the data here that I was dealing with. So I've got AL, Autauga County, 1001, right? So then I just say the state is data zero, the county is data one, et cetera, et cetera. 
do a little bit of uh, cleanup. And then um, ultimately I make a, um, a new entity here. So I just you know tell it the bundle and what I want in the different fields, and then I save it. We have, we have a lot of situations that where I work where the client has entered content in a spreadsheet, and they have multiple contributors, and you've got these huge spreadsheets with content. And basically, it's a title, it's some content, it might be an image, and the, the question always comes up: Well, can we just have them do that in Drupal instead of doing this in their spreadsheet and giving it to us, or? or going right from the spreadsheet into Drupal. I mean, there's got to be an easier way, but the ones that we really come up with. Well, you can import it from the spreadsheet. Just import it, right? Um, if you write a little import script. Like, I write these as just little, like, drush scripts um, that I just run. Yeah, it seems simple. <laughs> is, it, is it really simple? Yeah. Oh, it's longer. You gotta have somebody really normalize the heck out of your spreadsheet because yeah. garbage in, garbage out. Yeah. And usually you can't have the secretaries or whoever's been spelling everything for the last three years do it anyway. You gotta have uh, an obsessed, detailed tech person usually to normalize it right, or somebody who trained at that level. Or you're gonna have your IDs with hyphens and everything else and all that stuff. You gotta normalize. Yeah, but I mean, I usually do try to um, get around the whole problem by trying to have them enter it directly into the site. So in order to do that, what I do is I I really prioritize in the project schedule creating the CMS features, um, like the content types and the fields and things like that really early on in the development so that they can start to get trained and using it and adding content before even the design is done or the or any part of the front end is done. Because I don't like to, not only do I not want to them putting the content somewhere else and having to deal with that, I also don't want them using the site, not being ready as an excuse to not start working on their content. You have a history of data, you have a huge spreadsheet already, you need to, you need to have that in there for your record. Someone's got to put it in. Mm -hmm. And so you want to feed it in, rather than have them enter it row by row, they got to normalize it. And that could be a lot of work. Yeah, it can be. I mean, I had like a nightmare project really early on where it was an organization that didn't use any type of CRM for their, for their, um, it was really donors and members, not customers. They had dozens of different Excel sheets that had various listings of like, oh, this is everybody who attended this conference, and this is everybody who is a member this year, and this is everybody who attended this other conference, and this is everybody who donated. And it, none of it was normalized at all, and they wanted it that, you know, if a, if a woman had gotten married and changed her last name, or if she had, or if they had moved or something over the long course of this data, that I'm supposed to somehow figure that out, you know, and make this, make it just have one record for all these people with changing names and changing addresses and no actual identifiable information between them. Even their email addresses would change, right? And there was just like no data that, you know, they would say like, I'm supposed to, you know, infer it, you know, automatically infer it or something. Um, and it was a lot of work to get all of that data cleaned up because it was all just like randomly formatted. Okay, a couple of comments. Uh, there are some tools for within limits normalizing the spreadsheet data and so forth. One that comes to mind is Open Reply, yeah. uh, which will help at least with some of that. I mean, you have to have someone go through it anyway afterwards, but that will uh, deal with some of the things. Um, and for migrating CSV files, there's a plugin for migrating. Uh, CSV yeah. In particular for Drupal 8. Yeah, and we have used that, but. I don't know. If it depends, it's the I just find that migrate is useful if you um, are planning on rerunning something. A lot of times, and you kind of need to see the history. But if I'm just trying to do like a quick and dirty import, it's faster for me to just write a little script than have to figure out all the intricacies of migrate. Uh, 
anybody else? Final questions? I think they're going to come in here for, um, you know, when they thank you and tell you how much coffee you drank and stuff. So um, you can keep your seats. Whatever. Thank you, everybody, and thank you. Thank you.